Hey guys, it's your best boxing friends. I'm Kelsey and this is Rachel. Rachel, we're watching one of the 57 fights that we watched over the weekend. Yeah. Can we just say that I feel like there's too many fights on TV? <laughs> like, I can't, we didn't even watch all of them because they kind of run up against each other. Um, right. So we had to pick and I just say, like, I'm the kind of boxing fan, like, I feel like there's boxing people out there that are like, I love boxing and I watch, like, every single fight there is and, like, all the time and that's not the kind of boxing fan I am. Yeah. Like, I need, well, I need to be drawn into the fight in order to want to watch it. And, like, sometimes, I don't know, like, yesterday, there was even a lot of good boxing on. But, at one point, I was like, I mean, I really want to watch, like, a story in the, like, yeah. you know, something like, like a show. Like, I want fiction in my life. And so, or, you know what's missing from today's boxing world, in my opinion, is HBO's genius at storytelling. That was part of what drew people in to watch mm -hmm. HBO Boxing was how great they are at storytelling. Showtime does a similar thing with their stories, but they're not as good as it, good at it. Um, if you compare HBO 24-7 to Showtime's, uh, whatever they call it, it's not as good. It's not for me, at least. Um, I think particularly how uh, I feel like, I personally feel like that HBO... We talked about this a little bit on the walk yesterday about remember how HBO treated Floyd Mayweather Jr., mm -hmm. um, which was fair and criticized him where it warranted, but also lauded him where it was warranted. It's often warranted to Floyd, Floyd, especially the way he does in the ring. But when he went over to Showtime, it was all just rah rah. Floyd's the best. Mm -hmm. Tell tell this story about Floyd being the best, and that's the kind of stuff I don't like. I don't think it serves the sport. I don't think it ultimately will serve Showtime to its interest. But then you have people like me saying like, hey, what's going on? Yeah, well, yeah. I feel like in general, when people view stuff like that, even if they're not aware of it, they will um, slowly over time be less attracted to yeah. watching it because without being aware of it, they'll know that this isn't honest. Like, it doesn't seem real or, like, what have you. I mean, honestly, like, how many times has Showtime uh, lauded and, like, given a huge platform to what otherwise you'd be like, this person seems kind of awful, right? Like, and I don't know why they consistently do that. Now, the most important part of what a fighter does is inside the boxing ring. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fair to love boxing and love what a fighter does in the ring. I was talking to uh, Bobby Benton at Main Street Boxing and Muay Thai Gym in Houston. We we're talking about Floyd Mayweather. And I was like, I love what Floyd did in the ring. Some of the stuff outside of the ring, and you can Google Floyd Mayweather. Um, and his history with um, some of the things that he's been accused of, or actually, I think he went to jail for a while too. Like he had some issues in his life, but to, like to completely ignore those type of things. And Floyd's not a great example. I don't want to name any names. I'm just talking about Floyd because Floyd, Floyd's the best of a generation, so he's I guess used to the, the heat. I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> Love Floyd Floyd in his ring, but I wish that we had a better storyteller in boxing. I'm going to leave you alone today, Showtime. I hit you up yesterday. I'll do it again. Um, I wish we had a better storytelling. The zone is not a good storyteller. They're really great at showing lots of fights. They're really great at showing meaningful fights. I think Eddie Hearn in particular has done a, a great job of putting interesting and noteworthy fights together for that platform. But gone are the days of really being emotionally invested in the story of a fight, the way that HBO did it, I think that that lost art now, that art is now lost and how it will have to be rediscovered by somebody, whether it's Showtime who rediscovers it for themselves or um, The Zone or somebody like that. Or maybe yeah. Real Talk with Kelsey and Rachel becomes the, whatever, somehow, somehow. <laughs> we become a channel. Now, I think the most natural, like, next step for that would um, be ESPN, only because I think in oh. their other outside okay. of boxing they espn do. does similar storytelling they do that in football they do you're yeah. right they absolutely do that i just haven't seen, in boxing in boxing it's just like it seems so promotionally laced as if top rank there's top rank on espn mostly top rank um has well, what i would say way too big of a say and what who's on the air I remember when teddy atlas left it was because of he said mm -hmm. some thing Potentially, I, want, I don't know the story, but it seems like somebody all of a sudden who was new didn't like him over there. <laughs> Teddy Atlas, who has been in this, and now he plays a different role and he doesn't quite have the same platform. But yeah, I, I don't necessarily trust ESPN because of some of the criticisms we've had in the past. Yeah. All of a sudden, 
You only care about the lineal champion when it suits your interest. It's okay, like, if you want to be a lineal person, but then you have to... Right. You have not said one other lineal champion in boxing, and there are several. You've only mentioned the one that you gave a $100 million contract to. Yeah. Um, so stuff like that that they do consistently, and honestly, as good as storytellers are, they do the same thing in college football with their college football playoff thing that they created. Um, they tell one side of the story and are less interested in truth and journalism than they are promoting their own thing, and that, of course, is yeah. concerning. Or even last night, we didn't watch the Shakur Stevenson fight precisely because I didn't want to watch uh, him beat up a cab driver or whatever. Like, no disrespect to the guy who took the fight to fight him, um, but he was Shakur Stevenson was such a big favorite. This wasn't a fight that I thought warranted being on television even, and we all knew it was going to happen. But what I'm getting to is Andre Ward, who I think manages Shakur Stevenson, called the fight, right? That's a conflict of interest, right? And I'm not, I don't know whose job it is to tell maybe on, like Roy Jones Jr., the, every time Roy Jones Jr. managed a fighter or worked with a fighter on they HBO, he would, the... yeah, he would not be on the telecast because it makes sense. You open yourself up to unnecessary criticism when you don't follow good guidelines and best practices, and ESPN doesn't follow that, so how could I trust them with bigger things? I guess is right. Saying. Yeah, I get that. Um, yeah, I get that. And it also seems like with boxing, ESPN isn't willing to go all in on it. Yeah. Um, so the, definitely the production value and different things like that, like they're, it's not quite there um, with what they've decided to do. Let's give ESPN some positive stuff now. So I think that I love that they brought Max Klarman into boxing. I would love to see, I like, see Max, more Max unleashed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Max knows so much about boxing, um, and I think that he has, like, a way about him where he can, like, share his opinion, and he's uh, interesting, and people want to watch him. So, yeah, I'm all about, like, more Max, and but let him be who he is. I don't think Max is the type of person to be, you know company guy like he's, whatever you want yeah, to call that he's not brian so custer even, max is a real boxing guy who would love boxing and follow boxing even if it wasn't his job because that's what he did before his job yeah yeah and even if like say he he works for somebody who's like well hey this is our fighter so i need you guys to like whatever which you know hbo did sometimes yeah they had no control over larry merchant so they were like like that was just out the door like it wasn't going to happen but i feel like max didn't have the eccentricity yeah. of Larry Merchant right. to to just do whatever he wants regardless or maybe he didn't have the job security I don't know what it was but what I do know is that Max would find a way to remain honest in his analysis without like but still doing like the job he was yeah, asked to he do he already does it in his other show on ESPN first take he I think he's on first take we don't really watch that kind of stuff but <laughs> I've seen that show before the show where he talks and talks about general sports stuff He's very opinionated, has good thought processes, and it's will disagree with people openly and in front of them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need more of on the boxing telecast. But I yeah. like that they brought him in. That's awesome. Um, I think that Tim Bradley does a really good job of calling fights as far as the color commentary. I didn't like him at first, but he's grown on me, and I think that he says smart stuff. Andre Ward is one of the best at it right now in boxing. As really? Yeah, well, he's so... I feel like either one of these guys is co commentators. I think that Andre Ward... <laughs> I can't hear Andre Ward. His voice, whatever it is, I think it's how deep it is or something. I can't hear him. He doesn't... Uh, his voice doesn't rise above... Talk deeper, Andre. <laughs> his voice doesn't rise above, like, the noise of the arena for me. So I feel like half the time I can't hear him, and I end up just, like, ignoring him because it's not, like, coming through. The only thing I have against Tim Bradley is... You didn't beat Manny Pacquiao, Tim Bradley, okay. and also have that against everybody sitting next to him, who's like, yep, and of course, Joe Testor's like, and of course, you have a win over the legendary Manny Pacquiao. I'm like, yeah, technically. I mean, <laughs> like, I think it's okay to let Bradley be Bradley, but like, not to, it's just something, I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to criticize you, ESPN, but I'm not trying <laughs> not to either, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're the worldwide leader, you're supposed to be the best of us. My favorite, uh, like, former boxer commentator right now is Roy, definitely... Roy Jones Jr. Sergio Mora. Oh. <laughs> HBO doesn't have a Oh, I thought you said Mora. former. I see what you said. No, former boxer. Sergio um, Mora does a great job. I just think he does an excellent job, and he gives, like, his honest analysis regardless. Like, there was a telecast where it was, like, the, the, 
the disowned guy or whatever, and Xander Moore just gave his honest like analysis. Yeah, on it. we need more of that in boxing, whether it's at the zone, whether it's at ESPN. I would love to run one of these things and be like hire people and be like, hey, I want you to be you. Like, yeah. I don't want you to be dishonest because you guys know that, like, we signed a contract with Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. Like, I don't want you, like, that's what I would love to do. If I was in charge and owned these, I'd be Put like, us in charge. Hey, you know what I want from you? I want great boxing analysis. This is why I hired Just you. let us talk to people behind the scenes like, hey, you're not being honest. <laughs> Somebody needs to do it. There's, we've got to... We would also, while we're just taking over things here, we would also like Showtime to move Steve Farhood on up and just have him on more telecasts, giving his analysis <laughs> on boxing because it is fantastic, like so good. Yes. Yeah, we were talking about this on the walk too, about Steve Farhood. What we think, what I think is missing from the lead crew, the Showtime Championship Boxing crew, is a Larry Merchant type who will tell you the truth. There's nobody really there currently. And the yeah, and we who, like the guys that are yeah, there. Yeah, they all like, do a great job. We talked about, like, we love yeah, Al Bernstein. They're just not who they are. But that's who Al Bernstein is. Yeah. Like, he's kind of lovable. He's like, lovable that's and who he's he agreeable. Is. So if he started acting like Larry Merchant, history, you know. then it wouldn't fit. That would be dishonest. So, like, we're not asking anybody to be who they aren't. We're just saying that when you have a group of guys, like, you, it's nice to have that balance on the, yeah. in the group that, like, somebody like that might provide. Yeah, and so I think that Steve Farhad does an excellent job. I've always mm -hmm. thought that he's one of the best at that role. He's super smart. He's a real journalist. Um, he's pretty lovable, too. He's also, he's not as, uh, so Larry Merchant. Could be kind of abrasive. Yeah. Or you look at, like, Teddy Atlas. Sometimes Teddy Atlas is abrasive and, like, rubs people the wrong way. Right. And I don't, yeah, I don't get that from Steve Farhood. Like, right, he's not I feel that. like he can give, like, an opinion um, that maybe other people yes, like, don't agree with, yeah. but like you can listen to it and you're like, oh, okay, you know, like I don't agree with you, but like I get what you're saying, and you're not like, you know, totally offended by it. People like, there's, they're hot and cold on Teddy Atlas. I love Teddy Atlas because he tells me what he thinks. Even if I think what he thinks is outlandish yes. and unreasonable, yeah. I still love that he says it, and I think that I would just would like more of that yeah, yeah. in boxing. And, and boxing has a history of those types calling fights. They're getting to where they're not allowing those people on the air. And that has to do with uh, conflicts of interest, I think. I think when ESPN, they do the same the same thing in college football, but with ESPN, when they're invested in promoting a sport, a certain player, or mm -hmm. a certain fighter, they're not going to give you really what they think. And I think that it ultimately does everybody a disservice. Um, and boxing needs more of People that say the truth. We do appreciate you watching our show. If you want to like, comment, and subscribe, it helps the channel grow. And we definitely don't feel humiliated when you like, comment, and subscribe.